the video series that talks about hope, love, and faith in Jesus Christ. You're watching Faith Feature on the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find hope in the journey. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Faith Feature here on the Mars Hill Network. Now, this month, February, we have a couple things going on, and one of those things is International Christian Radio Ministries Month. We'll be highlighting different Christian radio ministries all around the world where they reach the gospel through the radio. And one of those ministries is Far East Broadcasting Company, and today joining me on Zoom is Viktor Akhtarov. He is a director at Far East Broadcasting Company in the Eurasia area. And uh, part of the area that you cover is that Russia-Ukraine area. Uh, and we will talk a little bit about that. But Victor, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Good to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And Victor, since you are the director at Far East Broadcasting Company, uh, it is my understanding that you know the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, have a, a great relationship with him. So I wanted to ask you about that since uh, we have everybody share their testimony here on the show. So, Victor, do you want to share your testimony and how you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ and also how your walk with the Lord has led you to the position you're in today at Far East Broadcasting Company? Well, uh, I'm one of those uh, one of those people who grew up in a Christian family. Of course, I, I grew up in Eastern Ukraine, and that's, by the way, where the conflict is. Uh, so, but um, I was born in a Christian family, which is an anomaly. Uh, I was the only uh, Christian kid in my school. Uh, for example, a thousand people that neighboring school did not have any Christians. So. So you you are you are kind of kind of unique when when you you, you stand out when when you uh, are a believer. So um, and it is uh, kind of difficult to pinpoint when I became a Christian. But one 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 of the events that that happened that kind of defined me uh, to to myself when was uh, as a young person in in the former Soviet Union. Um, you become a pioneer which is a young communist, you wear this red tie. Uh, so I was, I was uh, 11 uh, at the time. And since I was a good student, hard to believe, but I was actually a good student. Uh, and they offered me to be in the first group. That's an honor to become a pioneer when you're 11. And so I came wow. home, talked to my dad, who by that time spent five years in, in Soviet prisons for, for his faith already. And um, I said, well, I was kind of offered this, this thing. What do you think? And he said, uh, don't worry about it. You're 11. You don't have to make any radical decisions. But you know, they are atheists. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You don't have to become, become a pioneer. And um, mm -hmm. so next morning, I stood before, before my class. After uh, thinking about it through the night, I stood up before my class and uh, told my teacher I'm not going to become a Christian. I'm not going to become a pioneer because I'm a Christian. Mm. Only my voice was trembling. And the teacher tried to make fun of me and, and said, what are you talking about? You are a Christian? You actually believe in God? <laughs> and she thought that everybody would, would laugh at me, but everybody was listening. At, the, at that moment when I heard her kind of mocking the name of Christ, I said in a real loud, clear voice, yes, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to become a pioneer. So that, that was a defining moment for me. And all my friends supported me. That was my biggest worry, that my, my friends will not be friends with me anymore. And they, they said, good, Victor, that's the way to do it. Uh, so, but, but that was kind, kind of my public confession of, of my faith. And then, of course, as, as we grew up there, we... we went to church, um, and the church was uh, sometimes in the forest, and we would run from the police, and that, that was fun, actually. And, you know, it's it's not 
a boring kind of, you know, you sit in the church and abuse, you know, you go, you sing your songs, and then and then you run from the police as as, as you hear them coming, and, and then you go with, you know, a couple of other teenage friends and pray somewhere. So we, we had a very good time. And of course, we had uh, Christian radio uh, there when we heard the teaching and the good biblical presentations, uh, because we didn't have any seminaries. Our preachers were simple. They were very real, but very, very simple. So uh, radio was helping us as well. So that's uh, that. That's my way. And then when I already served in the in the and then still Soviet army. After that, I was introduced to to FBC and started started doing programs there. And it was in early 1990s when Soviet Union just disintegrated. People were so hungry. I, uh, you know, having no education, no um, broadcasting experience knowing uh, not much about life. I, I would sit there and, and talk to, to the young kids about uh, my faith and just sharing my faith and Jesus and thousands, thousands of uh, people throughout the former Soviet Union would respond. And, and you know, I, I just came from the, from the army and uh, it was interesting uh, to receive, uh, you know, letters from the soldiers as they would sit like 200 of them and listen to the program. Uh, and and ask a bunch of questions. Exciting times. Wow, Victor, thank you so much for sharing that story. I really do appreciate stories like that. I actually, I have a friend who's from that Ukraine, Russia area, and he told me that his family, because of their Christian faith, actually had to leave. They had to move, and they eventually migrated here to the United States. So yeah, no, from your story, it's just you know, a witness of two, as we hear from the Bible, not only about Christ, but about the persecution that people face around the world for Christ. And, uh, you know, it's just really amazing that uh, you have been able to reach and touch so many people in your community, because, you know, as we know from examples in scripture, one person can really make an impact in helping thousands, or even more than that, come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just admire you for your bravery, even though you were mocked and whatnot, you know, you, you still held strong on your faith. And that's just something that we need to take as an example. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, thank you for doing that for the sake of the gospel. And, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit more about this position, because as you were saying, you had very little broadcasting experience when you got into the job. But now you've been there for a number of years and you guys are doing some great things out there. So um, do you want to describe to me a little bit about uh, what you do there right now and uh, maybe how you direct those that are on the ground there helping spread the gospel? Sure. Uh, just just give you, uh, to give you a very short kind of history of, of the ministry, we've been broadcasting to the former Soviet Union for years via shortwave. And then when the country opened up, we were the first one to get in and we built um, the station. And interestingly enough, we built the station right uh, at the place where the jamming station used to be that used to jam our broadcast, um, which was the Soviet government was doing. Uh, so and God let us open uh, a station there in the city of Khabarovsk in, in the very far east of Russia. Then from then on, we moved throughout Russia building stations and then um, we were having two biggest AM stations in Moscow and St. Petersburg with hundreds of thousands of listeners. And then 2016, they shut down our stations. Russia is beginning to close. So they kind of pushed us into the online internet ministry. Uh, today we have um, month to month, we have from four to six to 12 million listeners a month. Wow. So uh, you being in the digital area, you you understand uh, what what, what mm. it means, and, and it is amazing to see how God is using the new media in Russia. Uh, mm. Thousands of people are responding. About a thousand responses a day is what we get today uh, throughout, throughout Russia. Some amazing broadcasters, some people who are doing hours of uh, online radio every day. Mm -hmm. um, people are being saved, uh, families are being restored. Uh, I can give you testimony after testimony. So many averted suicides uh, in Russia and Ukraine, which are uh, in first kind of uh, place 
uh, of uh, teen suicide. So, so God is doing a lot of miracles throughout Russia. Of course, in Ukraine, we have a little more freedom, but uh, a lot more difficulties. You know, the right. war happened, uh, started in 2014, never kind of got resolved. And uh, now this uh, thing is happening with, you know, Russian military uh, kind of being on the border of Ukraine. And many Ukrainians are trying to kind of ignore it because they went through so much pain they don't want to go back even psychologically into thinking that this might happen again and and many people are scared and uh, we have seven stations throughout ukraine right now fm stations and what is uh, going on is is amazing how people respond to our podcasts we had to create a group of counselors we have about uh, four people who are on staff and many more volunteers who are counseling listeners as, as they're calling in we just looked at the past few months we have uh, 750 i believe people who uh, not only became christians through that but also were connected to the local church wherever they mm-hmm. live in ukraine we have in many cities small churches but we are also working with the church and trying to uh, help them um, build their capacity as far as accepting new new people who are you know, sometimes they, usually they come with, with problems. So, mm-hmm. so we're training the church, we're bringing the people uh, to, to, to the local church, we're sharing Christ uh, on the airwaves and, of course, on social media, which is, which is growing like never before in Ukraine. Mm, yeah, amen to that. And as you were saying before, me being a digital guy, yes, I do understand the importance of it especially as you're saying with um, broadcasting over the radio, you know, uh, depending on the government that's in place, you know, the entity that controls that and what maybe their belief system is or their agenda, you know, they may try to silence certain voices. And even in the U.S., there is some pushback against Christian radio. So I can't even imagine what it's like in Russia, where it's a lot more strict on Uh, your Christian faith, but it is also really encouraging to hear about Ukraine and that you do have FM stations there that are broadcasting. Really quickly, before we continue, uh, is there a link that people can listen to your broadcast that, uh, you know, the online link that people can access? Sure, uh, sure. In Russia, it's uh, teos.fm, T-E-O-S. We are the voice of God. We we are very humble to to Mm -hmm. Russian people. So it's teos.fm, and in Ukraine, it's radiom.ua. Uh, so so uh, Russians, Ukrainians throughout the world uh, listen to us and, and respond to us. Now, a lot of uh, workers, especially from Ukraine, are working in, uh, in Europe, and many of them are listening, and, and many of them are becoming Christians as well. Amen, amen. And, you know, the broadcast you guys have, it's very important, and especially important during this time when there's so much going on in the world. And, you know, as we know, the situation right now, with, you know, Russia and Ukraine, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. And I'll be honest, I don't know much about the situation, but really what I do know, just what I understand is, you know, depending on what happens, what they decide to do, you know, will decide on what we decide to do. And then that will decide on what Russia decides to do based on what we decide to do. And it could just be a whole mess. Uh, But the point is, is that the people there, they must be feeling maybe a little bit of fear, confusion, uncertainty. Um, But I just wanted to ask you about the climate in those places. I'm not sure if you've been in touch with people there, uh, especially Christians that are there. But if you have, uh, what is the climate like there right now, especially for a Christian? How are they getting through this situation? Yeah, of course, I'm in touch with them. All of this is kind of going through through, through my heart. Uh, I'm uh, ethnic Russian myself who grew up in Ukraine exactly in that problem area. My wife is Ukrainian, so all of this is very close to me personally. And I, um, we have two stations in Ukraine that uh, are located in, in the eastern part and are broadcasting to the rebel-controlled territories of Ukraine. And and we get responses from, from both sides. And we are, of course, above the politics, however difficult it might be. Uh, for example, one, one of our broadcasters, um, she, uh, she lost... Uh, two of her cousins in the in this war just just a few years ago, and she was a refugee because of this. She had to run with her 
family and her daughter, daughter could not speak for a while after all of this experience. And then she comes and starts broadcasting, starts sharing the gospel. And it's coming from her uh, living through all of this experience. And people feel that. People understand this is not somebody uh, like Teddy from the U.S. telling them about the gospel. It's mm -hmm. uh, Alicia who lives next to them uh, and who is going through the same kind of difficulties, but she has something they don't have. She has Jesus. She has hope. She has life in, in Christ and the victory of Christ. And, and she's sharing all of that. And people from both sides of the conflict are responding to that. And we are connecting them to local churches as soon as, as, as we can. We talk to them. We counsel them. We help them a little bit and we get them connected because we are working for, for the Ukrainian church. Of course, people, we, we don't want any radio Christians. We want real Christians. So, But we want to be this bridge. And uh, of course, people are going through very difficult times. Um, people are going through, uh, through the memories of what happened uh, a few years back. And, uh, and they don't want to go back to that reality. And many people don't even acknowledge their fears, but it's there. They don't acknowledge what, what's going on inside. They, they try to pretend that everything is okay, uh, but, but the reality is harsh. So as soon as you talk to them about those issues, they, they open up. And some are angry, some are resentful, and many are open uh, to spiritual conversations. Mm, amen. Amen. Well, Victor, that is amazing to hear that even though during these difficult times, there are still people that are being positively impacted with the word of God out there. And as the situation continues to you know, build or whatever happens, we will be praying for you guys that the gospel will reach lives and that uh, they'll just trust in the Lord no matter what happens, because we can always rely on him. Uh, if you want to catch their broadcast, I'm going to put the link up on the screen right now. And Victor, thank you so much for joining us here on Faith Feature. I know you're a very busy man. So thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much. Especially thank you for praying for Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Faith Feature. We will have some more interviews, not only on the radio, but we should have another interview coming for uh, Faith Feature uh, during International Christian Radio Ministries Month. Until next time, I'm Teddy Caputo with the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find hope in the journey. <laughs>